Hi there. Today I'm going to uh, cast in place faceted sapphires and I'm going to be using my fancy new phone so hopefully you guys can see all that close-up detail and you get a better idea of what I'm doing in the clay. Let's get to it. Alrighty, I'll be using a vertical flask for this one and I'm going to be casting in place these um, sapphires. In this band so as always we start with the male side lip down pack it with some loose clay first and then with some bigger chunks and compress it with your hammer scraping off any of that excess clay Talcum powder that surface. Get your object, push it in halfway, all right, put the female half on top, line up those registration marks and then pack with some loose crumbly clay first, pressing it down with your fingers, make sure that that is tightly packed around your object. And then you can put some bigger pieces in and hammer it. Cut off that excess. Gently open it up. Let's create a little funnel. With my knifey tool, I'm just going to cut a little triangle. And using the back of my paintbrush, I'm just going to smooth that down because we don't want any loose, crumbly bits of clay. Put that ring blank back in just to crisp up that design again because I did sort of disturb it while making that funnel. Let's place some stones. I'm going to start with the center stone, that green one. I'm going to put just a little bit of purple ointment on the table of that stone. You don't need much, just a tiny little bit. This is a gentle persuasion for that stone to stay where you've placed it. I'm going to place it on that vertical wall. All right, it's in place. Let's lay the rest of the stones down. I've laid those stones on that vertical wall and the tables of the stones are just kissing that clay wall. See how the stone is half poking up out of the clay? It means that the parts that are proud will fit into this opposite side. So the stone should end up being roughly in the middle of the band. All right, you can see all those stones laid up against that vertical wall. Now it's time to close the mold and open it and see if these stones move. Wonderful, everything's positioned. Let's do the air vent. I'm just going to do two on either side, just like that. Maybe wondering why I'm doing two instead of just one. 
is because I think that maybe the, the center green stone is going to sit about here and I don't want to do one air hole that the green stone is going to block. So I'm going to do two air vents. All right, let's close this up and cast. I have my safety glasses on and let's go. Igniting the gas first, and introducing oxygen and we just keep going with that mix until we get a really hot, aggressive flame and that's our melting point. That's looking pretty good. But just to really make sure it doesn't hurt to stay here for another 10 seconds before pouring. You want to make sure your metal is absolutely molten hot. Bring it on over to that flask. Rest your crucible against the flask. Tip it so it's just about to pour in, but not quite, and aim that torch at the lip that you're about to pour over. And when we pour it down that hole, we're going to do it really quickly. We're going to dump it down the hole, and we're going to keep the flame on the metal as it's being poured, because we want to make sure that metal is as hot as it possibly can be. When you're feeling good and ready, just one, two, three, down the hatch. It's going to get a little bit smoky, so mask on. Let's open it up and have a look. A little bit of extra metal has gone over the stones. A little bit more than I'd like. But better more metal than not enough. So those stones definitely secured in place. I'll just have to unearth them a little bit with a graver. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy with that. For all that matters, now I feel All that's lost in me reveal Turn around and spread my wings This is one of my favorites 